Well, hello. I'm expecting the flea market. Can't tell you what I got because it'll influence your. I did get some things uh, and, and some organs and some peace dollars, but it'll influence your vote, and you still still have a little over six hours. Uh, what I'm going to do today, I'm going to try to do the second comic, Rocky uh, Marijuana Seed Meets the Old Coot, and I have the mixing, the same as the first ones. Same guys did it back in Miami in uh, 1969, and the comics, uh, that's when they were written, and then they were executed uh, by the artist and, and uh, printed in uh, 1993. So uh, I got a uh, a new and bigger loop. I'm going to try maybe doing a few close-ups today, and of course it'll be a general screw-up. But uh, here we go, and this will be again. This will uh, this will for sure. I'm pretty sure this will be a two-parter. So. Deep in the land of psychedelics, there was a lake. It was a lake so beautiful, so peaceful, so much the perfect little spot that all those that set eyes upon it were changed. But this lake was owned by an old coot. This old coot was a strange old man. He came there to the lake when he was a very young man. Nobody remembers back that far, but legend has it that one day this handsome young man came out from the sunrise and carved a home for himself and his bride here on the shores of this lake. It was said that they had so many good years together here at this lake, and that if you were to pick out a spot and populate it with the beautiful people, you'd have to pick this very lake and the old coot and his wife would be its first citizens. If there was ever a place that could be called paradise, it was then, and it was this lake. The old coot and his wife enjoyed eating the herbs that grew in abundance around this beautiful lake. They would eat them together and sit back and watch the light show as it unfolded before their very eyes, here on this lake's shore. Once a year, in thanks for all that the lake meant to the pair, they would have a three-day light show that began at sunset each night and lasted until sunrise. On the first night, it would depict how the old coot found the lake. On the second, it would show what the lake meant to them. And on the third, it would show what promise the old coot and his wife had for the future of this lovely spot. There came a season when the herbs weren't as plentiful as they had been in the past, when it appeared that there wouldn't be enough for all the people that would be coming to see the old coot's light show. About this time, a traveling pusher came to the shores of this lake. He had with him, he said, the greatest assortment of herbs the world has ever seen, and that he would be more than happy to sell the old coot some for his forthcoming bash. Come see, I have the greatest variety of herbs in all psychedelic land. I have some reds from Panama, some gold from Colombia. I have the finest Owsley acid from Berkeley and some of the healthiest mescal buttons from the Southwest. I've got synthetic. I've got organic. I've got stuff that will turn your mind to galactic dust or just give you a nice mellow head. I am Mr. Pusher, and I have sold some of the finest herbs this country has ever seen. You say you have a light show coming up. Well, just leave it to me. 
I have a little item here that is hot out of the laboratories and promises to be the best light show stimulator of all times. Get your herbs here. Well, the old coot was overjoyed. He would dazzle the audience and make this the greatest show of all time. He would stimulate every synapse in the audience. The first night of the celebration, the old coot used his own herbs, saying that he had bought for the final night, which was always the biggest rush. That was the night that he gave his interpretation of what he felt would come of this beautiful spot, this tranquil, peaceful lake. On the final night, all the fans were so enthused, they had all said that this, to this point, had been the best show ever, and they all were anxious to see what the old coot would be doing for a finale. They knew that his last show was always the best. The old coot began the evening by passing out the herbs that he purchased from the pusher to his audience. The audience ingested them, and so did his wife. But the old coot had a few herbs of his own left, so he ate them, as he wanted his guests to have the best and enjoy the show to the fullest. The old coot was such a grand dude. When the show began, instead of hearing the oohs and the ahs that he had anticipated, the audience freaked out. They screamed and they hollered. They flipped around as though they would never come back on down. It was horrible. They turned on each other, bitching at each other, and then on the old coot. His wife ran into the lake and was never seen again. The rest of the fans scattered into the woods. Some flipped into the lake, never to be heard of again. Up to that time, they had been so peaceful these peaceful natives which composed the ten tribes that lived in that part of the psychedelic land. From that time on, they became known as the Ten Lost Tribes. All was panic and pandemonium. The pusher disappeared with the tribes, and all that was left was the old coot. Some say that he flipped out himself over the loss of his wife. But that was all years and years ago, and how much of the legend is truth, we will never know. Time has erased all records. All we know is that there were ten tribes, and in the folklore of each tribe, there was the mention of a handsome man and his beautiful wife living in a spot so peaceful and tranquil, and that it was here on the shores of this very lake where this all took place. The years had been hard on the old coot. You could see time itself etched into his brow. If you could count the wrinkles as you might the rings on a tree, this man would prove to be old indeed. He became a crotchety old man and did what he could to keep everyone away from his flake. He dug up all the herbs around the lake and allowed very few to use it for recreation. Ah, but such a spot as this should not be denied to the people. What with the war and all, they needed every opportunity to get away to such a peaceful spot. But the old coot didn't care. Most of the citizens had forgotten about this lake. And by the time that Rocky Marijuana Seed had stumbled onto the lake in his travels, most of the natives of the land thought it only to be a legend and that no such spot really existed. There were a few old people that would like to talk about it, but for the most part, they were ignored. They would only speak of it when they ate the herbs, so it was generally assumed that no such place really existed. But Rocky stumbled on it and began to plant his herbs. Oh, I'm so pleased to turn on this spot. It's really great. These herbs will do the trick for all the natives. I really dig turning on all these nice people. As Rocky was planting his herbs, the old coot sprung upon him. Rocky couldn't believe his eyes. Here was a face out of the past. The old coot seemed like a mummy. It was staring him right in the face and saying that he had no right to be there. 
you upstart. Get the hell away from my leg. Take those damn herbs of yours and get the hell away from here. I'm going to do a job on you, you freak from the herb farm. The old coot continued to accost Rocky and say that he had no right coming here. The old coot flipped out as they wrestled about on the shore of the lake. Rocky tried to protect himself, and the old coot tried to do him in. Some herbs began to fly about. Some flew in the air and others on the ground, and one flew right into the old coot's mouth. Before he knew it, he had swallowed it. It wasn't five minutes before the old coot was flying high. He was off. The first thing he did was flash back to that all-time bummer when his wife slipped into the lake, never to be seen again. But then he went further back, and still further. He went back beyond the final light show and began to remember all those things about the lake that made him want to create the shows. He went back into time and remembered the beauty that had warmed his heart. And as he went back, he became a younger and younger man. And each wrinkle left his brow. Each gray hair became colored again. And a twinkle grew in his eye that had not been there since he was with his wife. As he came down from the high that was created by the earth, he saw that all was beautiful about the lake. And it was still there. The old coot turned and saw his wife as she came up out of the lake, as beautiful as ever. She walked across the lake on the tops of the lily pads and met the old coot on the shore. All the peace and tranquility of this spot returned. And this, again, was the land of good and plenty. As the old coot turned to thank Rocky Marijuana Seed, he found that he was gone. But there, where he had been sitting, was left one bag of herbs, which the old coot and his wife began to plant. And today, if you go to this lake at the right time of year, you can see this beautiful spot. In three days a year, you can eat the herbs, see the greatest light show of them all, but never forget what happened here. Never take any herbs from a stranger.